Hello, welcome to Revenant Reads. I'm Vin, and this is the monthly wrap up for April of 2023. Okay, so I have a pretty big pile of books here <laughs> in front of me. Um, it was just one of those months where I got a lot of reading done, for me at least, what I consider a lot of reading. Uh, I just, I not only, I don't, I wouldn't say that I had tons more time reading, but the time that I did have, I was just able to focus on reading far more than I usually could. So I was able to utilize that time and read fairly quickly, uh, more quickly than I generally would. So. All of the books that I'm going to discuss here, I have spoken of more in depth in previous videos. Sometimes those are Fresh Red Kills videos where I talk about things that I had recently finished reading. Um, and, you know, or, or videos like that. So if you're interested in further thoughts on any of these things, you can always go back to those older videos. Here, I'm just giving a fairly simple summary of each of these. I'm going to try and do so in something of an order in which I read things. So the first thing that I finished reading in April was this. Uh, Eric Klein's Three Stones Make a Wall, The Story of Archaeology. Um, <clears throat> this is by Princeton University Press. Uh, now, I, um, I am a, a host, uh, co-host. I started it, but uh, I'm followed by all, I have these co-hosts with me. They're um, amazing uh, for a year-long reading event called Historathon. Um, where we are reading, discussing, and celebrating nonfiction history through the month of 2023. And we split the year up into four quarters. The first quarter, January, February, March, uh, was looking at the era from prehistory up to the year 500 CE. And this generally fell within that. Um, the other thing that was going on that has actually ended, uh, I have completed the 50 book challenge, uh, where I was going to read 50 books that I already own physical copies of, uh, before I would go buying other books. And I did make one exception. Uh, well, I, I, had some, I had several exceptions. That's just because, you know, that's just how I do things. Um, rules were made to be bent. Uh, otherwise, why have them? But um, I had already allowed myself to basically buy a book a month to do uh, buddy reads or um, booktube events. Uh, but also, Princeton University Press had a great sale going on. It was like 75% off. Um, and obviously there's a limited time. So I jumped on that and got not a big stack, uh, you know, a couple of books, um, from there. And I was going to read all of those for Historathon, uh, all but one, just because I wasn't going to have time for one of them for the, uh, the schedule. But, um, this is the first one that I read for that vow, uh, because I had bought in during the book ban, I have to read it within a year. Uh, so this is the first one. And I really enjoyed this. Uh, this is a great introduction to archaeology and the history of archaeology. Um, there are some, not photographs, but there are illustrations in this. Um, let's see if I can find an example of one. But uh, Klein does a great job of basically discussing the, um, the more important historical archaeological finds. And he also takes breaks to basically talk about how archaeology is done. So... You know, how do they find places? How do they determine where to dig? How do they how do they dig? How do they date things? Um, so all around, this is just a really, really good introduction for people who want to maybe be introduced more into archaeology, maybe uh, know more about it um, beyond what maybe you'd see in Indiana Jones or something like that, something misleading like that. Um, so I would highly recommend this for that reason. I also read in April, A Night to Remember, uh, by Walter Lloyd. This was published in 1955, and it is an account of the sinking of the Titanic. Um, basically starts when the iceberg hits it, and it follows it down, and in the immediate aftermath. Um, and Walter Lloyd, uh, he interviewed dozens and dozens of survivors uh, to basically create his narrative, and it is quite good. Um, he jumps around from perspective to perspective. He really gives you a sense of urgency, uh, but it's also clear really what's going on, when it's going on, how's, how it's happening, how different people are reacting, uh, how perceptions can be different. And he really kind of marks this as an end of an era, uh, an end of the kind of ostentatious classism uh, that people of all walks seem to have accepted. But after this, it uh, becomes less acceptable. Um, <clears throat> I had read this for, um, I'm a, I'm a middle school history teacher, social studies teacher, and I also 
have begun running a monthly history book club in the school um, where we read book a history book every single month. Uh, the first month we actually looked at graphic novels, the second month, which was this, we looked at nonfiction history. And all the readers, all the kids who read this, really enjoyed it. Uh, they had a really good time with it and they were able to do it. So uh, I read it for that and I'm glad I, glad I ended up picking this book for the book club. I had quite a good time with this one. Um, I did also, I guess since they're right here, I did read some graphic novels. Um, I'm not going to talk about these very much, but I had read uh, All-Star Batman, um, My Own Worst Enemy, which is a great kind of, I, I really like this by Scott Snyder, um, a kind of cool road trip with Two-Face um, that I thought was, was pretty good. There was a, a remake, basically, <laughs> sort of a remake of 30 Days of Night with a new artist and a slightly different um, narrative by uh, by Steve Niles. And um, this was okay. Um, I wasn't too keen on some of the story changes. It brought up more questions and answers, um, but it's, it's okay. Not highly recommended. And I also looked at Joe Hill, uh, Dying is Easy, uh, illustrated by Martin Simmons. Um, this is the first Joe Hill graphic novel that I have read. Uh, it's not really horror, it's more of a, a mystery thriller. It's about a uh, sort of a disgraced uh, former cop who is now a stand-up comedian who is then um, suspected of being a murderer. Uh, and he has to kind of run around before the police can get him to prove his innocence. Uh, I like the character work, I like the, I like the art and the coloring. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the story itself, the plot is okay, uh, but really the, the characters and the art is what I like most about this. Uh, I did also read a uh, collection of poetry, Dark Passages, Moments of Transition by Sean D. Stanfast, who is a fellow booktuber. Um, so I want to support him and read his poetry. And um, <clears throat> he's got some really good ones in here. In the video I made about this, I read what was probably my favorite one about um, an oak tree on a hill. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get back into the habit of reading more poetry again. I always kind of fall in and out of it, but maybe one of these days I'll have a more of a steady habit. Um, I've continued with my Latin studies. Uh, I did, I have been reading the um, Familia Romana by Hans Orberg, uh, Lingua and Latina series, um, works that are entirely in Latin, but they get progressively, they go from easy to difficult. Uh, and this is a supplementary dialogue book. Um, and I've been, uh, up until very recently, I had been um, doing this along with a study buddy, Sabrina. Uh, and uh, we, we finished this and it was, we felt like it was quite a victory um, <laughs> to, to finally get through these uh, Latin dialogues, and we overall, we enjoyed it. Um, I'll eventually make a Latin update, but uh, we both have hit something of a, uh, I think she hit more of a brick wall, but I'm more climbing the rubble of a wall. Uh, it's, the, the Latin has kind of gotten increasingly difficult, uh, you know, quicker than we can really keep up with. So I've been taking Lingua Latina, I'm still reading through it, but I'm going a little more slowly. Um, I was doing a chapter a week. I'm kind of, I've also had some very busy weekends, um, especially with spring and a new house, a new property and having to do, you know, maintain that sort of thing. I'm still working on it, but slowly, but I've also been reading little uh, short Latin novellas um, that are written at a basic level. And this is one of the ones that I read, uh, Aldo Censor. Um, it's essentially about the, uh, the Gauls, uh, like attacking Rome and, you have sacred geese up on, uh, was it Palatine or Capitoline Hill? Um, and one of the geese wants to try and help, and he wants to get a magic scepter from one of the temples, but it's you as the reader realize that it's not a temple, it's a latrine, and what he's basically taken is the sponge on the stick that they use to wipe themselves, but he thinks it's magical, so it's comical, you know, fun nonsense, using a little bit of Roman history and some humor in there, um, but... It's nice to read Latin in a casual way for enjoyment rather than constantly trying to figure out what's being said because Latin gets very, very complicated. Uh, but this, you know, this is just to kind of keep my, you know, uh, keep me from getting overly fatigued. Um, so I also read that. 
I, I'll make, again, in the future, at one point, I'll make some a video about these novellas. And finally, uh, I was also reading books about the Viking Age uh, for Historathon. So I read uh, The Age of the Vikings by Anders Winroth, um, a very good one volume overall text. Uh, I, I, I hesitate to say introductory text because it is arranged thematically, which I think would be very difficult for people who don't know anything about the Vikings or the Viking Age. Um, you know, it, to be introduced to that because it can be very difficult to get the context and the chron chronology down. Um, but if it's not the first thing, if this is not the first thing you've read about um, Norse culture, but maybe you're, you know, you have some of the basics down, but you want to get a little more detail in, I think this would be an excellent option. I would also recommend Children of Ash and Elm by Neil Price, uh, but I think this is actually a very good companion book to that. And I read The Last Viking. Uh, the True Story of King Harald Hadrada by Don Hallway, uh, in which Hallway, you know, this is, uh, this is King Harald of Norway, um, who, whose death at Stamford Bridge in 1066 march, marks the end of the Viking Age. Uh, and he's essentially trying to just tell a really good story, a really good yarn using the historical sources. It is not academic. Um, it is more of a, you know, casual, fun read. Um, and again, I, I've gone into more detail on this in previous videos. Um, but uh, I had fun with this. Uh, King Harold is not necessarily a likable person. You're not going to mourn his loss at the end. You might even celebrate it a little. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> Hallway does a good job of taking the sources and trying to kind of create a narrative out of it. And, um, you know, he lets you generally know when he's when something is probably legendary and not to his credit. So I would still highly recommend this, even if it's on the lighter side. And finally, uh, I also had read two sagas uh, for Saga Long, uh, one of my favorite booktube events that happens every April. So is the saga of Greta the Strong, uh, about an outlaw who uh, remains an outlaw for quite a number of years. I forget it offhand exactly how many, but this is a later saga written around the 14th century. And, um, you know, it, it's it's essentially, uh, it's Greta's story. He's not likable. He's more of an anti-hero. Um, <clears throat> the book kind of goes from an old saga tradition and it starts moving more and more as the narrative goes into more of like a romantic chivalric writing from the continent. So it reflects the changing ways in which literature was being created uh, and also some of the attitudes. But it's also kind of cool because um, a lot of other saga figures show up in here. Um, so you get this sense of a shared universe, which I really enjoyed. And plus there's just some cool fights with like ghosts and uh, <laughs> uh, all kinds of creatures. It's it's really a lot of fun, although most of it's pretty grounded. Unlike the last thing I'm going to talk about, King uh, Saga of King Rolf uh which is a legendary saga, which takes place before the Viking Age. Um, and it's Shorter, certainly more disjointed, um, not nearly as fleshed out as something like that's more novelistic, like uh, the saga of Greta the Strong, uh, but still fun in its own ways. You have things like werebears and uh, armies of the undead. You have shamanic trances. You've got basically witches and elves. And uh, it, it's more like reading a very early, simple fantasy story. Um, so if you like the fantasy genre, I want to see where a lot of stuff came from, because this stuff certainly inspired people like Tolkien. Um, I would highly recommend checking this out. It's a short read, although it is it is bizarre in a lot of ways. There's, you know, both of these were written by Christians about an earlier era, and sometimes that's done with elegance, like here, and sometimes it feels more uh, like oil and water mixing <laughs> at times, um, and that's more the case here. So a bizarre read, but some really cool things in here. So... Those are the things that I read for April of 2023. Uh, this is a pretty big stack. Um, I'll see if I can actually hold it up. But um, it was a it was a good month for reading. Uh, so I read uh, Three Stones Make a Wall, A Night to Remember, three graphic novels, I'm not going to say them all, um, Dark Passages by Sean Stanfast, some Latin works, The Age of the Vikings, The Last Viking, and two sagas. If you read any of these, I'd love to hear your thoughts. And as always, thank you, BookTube.